digestive disorders during pregnancy since you have seen this topic many times or many patients come relating to this complication during pregnancy or a disease condition during pregnancy it is very important to understand why hypertension occurs first like classification of hypertension in pregnancy so today we will start with this topic the classification of hypertension in pregnancy now when hypertension occurs during pregnancy it is a toxic state which is occurring in pregnancy and it occurs due to different reasons hypertension occurs due to different reasons first cause of first it occurs it occurs due to gestational hypertension or the first type of hypertension during pregnancy is gestational hypertension second it is pregnancy induced hypertension in that two types are there preeclampsia and eclampsia and third type is chronic hypertension in chronic hypertension there are again types one may be chronic renal disease she may be having chronic essential hypertension or she may have any medical disorder during pregnancy such as pheochromocytoma lupus uh, uh, sle that is systemic lupus erythromatosis so there are many factors which are responsible to cause hypertension during pregnancy now the first factor you are first type i told you that is the gestational hypertension so the gestational hypertension means hypertension due to pregnancy and one more hypertension i told you pregnancy induced hypertension but difference is there between gestational hypertension and pregnancy induced hypertension gestational hypertension or in gestational hypertension there is rise in blood pressure but there is absence of proteinuria and edema but pregnancy induced hypertension there are two types here i told you that is preeclampsia and eclampsia in this there is presence of edema and there is presence of protein urea so the main difference gestational hypertension also develops after 20 weeks of pregnancy pregnancy induced hypertension is also seen after the 20 weeks of pregnancy so this is different so these are all the toxemias of pregnancy which is occurring during the pregnancy such as gestational hypertension pregnancy induced hypertension in that two types preeclampsia eclampsia and chronic hypertension in this chronic hypertension you have chronic renal disease due to that at the hypertension is present or chronic essential hypertension patient is suffering from or any other medical disorders such as pheochromocytoma or systemic lupus erythromatosis this occurs as a result of which hypertension occurs so the hypertension of pregnancy how will you know whether she is really hypertensive or not or what are the criteria on that the patient is suffering from hypertension it is dependent on so when a patient having or when there is an absolute rise of blood pressure that is systolic blood pressure up to 140 mm of mercury and diastolic pressure of 90 mm of mercury or rise of blood pressure of 30 mm of mercury or diastolic pressure of 15 mm of mercury or previously taking blood pressure at the first she had an examination or she has taken a bp and after that she has a sudden rise of 30 mm of mercury or 15 mm of mercury then that, that is also taken as an hypertension during pregnancy so the criteria is means when the hypertension means what happens when the bp rises convention for absolute value means what when the absolutely the bp rises or when she is pregnant when bp presents with 41 140 mm of mercury and 90 mm of mercury then it is called she is called as she is having hypertension or previously taking blood pressure that you are noting her blood pressure and previously have taken a blood pressure and after that values or relating to that values when 30 mm of mercury the blood pressure rises or that is systolic pressure and diastolic pressure rises by 50 mm of mercury then it is called as hypertension and it should be when you take at least two occasions you should take this measurements and if this when you take this measurements on at least two occasions and the bp came, comes high on that matter and then only it is called as hypertension during pregnancy now normal physiological changes in pregnancy so you should first know what happens normally during the pregnancy what is the normal condition during pregnancy so hypertension when it occurs during the pregnancy it is not a normal condition you should know this normal physiology is what 
there is occurring fall of blood pressure. When pregnancy is normal, the blood pressure falls during the pregnancy. It continues to fall in pregnancy up to 22 to 24 weeks of pregnancy, and then it starts slowly rising. Why this occurs? Why there is a fall of blood pressure during the pregnancy? During pregnancy, hormone secretion increases, mainly the progesterone hormones and all. They haven't and today we'll see in hypertension, that is the pregnancy. You'll see pregnancy induced hypertension. And today we'll continue this topic, preeclampsia in pregnancy. This is a common complication which is occurring of common disease condition which is occurring during the pregnancy. So today we'll see about the topic preeclampsia in pregnancy. So this is a type of pregnancy induced tension. Now, what is preeclampsia? Preeclampsia is a multi-system disorder of unknown etiology characterized by development of 40-90 mm of mercury or more with proteinuria or it may be present with edema also. In a previously non-motensive and non-protein uric woman, means what happens? What is preeclampsia? It is a multi-system disorder. What it is characterized by? Development of hypertension. So keep the mind in this multi-system disorder. Means not only blood pressure rises, but due to this rise of blood pressure, the disorder occurs in the multi-system. That is all the organs, mainly the main vital organs, they are affected by. The preeclampsia is what? A multi-system disorder. So it will be affecting all the vital organs. And which is characterized by what? Development of hypertension. What happens? BP rises in this. It rises above the basal levels. It comes to about, when it is about 140-90, you call it preeclampsia. It rises, this is commonly rises during the second trimester of pregnancy, that is from the 20 weeks in a previously normotensive and a non-proteinuric woman. So this hypertension rises, yeah. Now, incidence of preeclampsia, it varies from 5 to 15 percent. In primary gravida, it is more. Now, what are the risk factors of preeclampsia? Mainly a primary gravida. She is usually a young or an elderly female. Young female means what? When it is a teenage pregnancy, that is pregnancy below 19 years of age. Or elderly female means elderly primary gravida means first time she is pregnant for about 35 years of age. So this is also a risk factor. Then family history of hypertension or preeclampsia. When her family, she is having a history of any hypertension or preeclampsia, then that is also one of the risk factors. Then the third factor that is placental abnormalities. Placental abnormalities means usually the overdevelopment of the placenta or no development of the placenta. All these two factors usually relate to the risk factors for the hypertension during pregnancy, that is hyperplacentosis means more big placenta where there is the formation of trophoblastic tissue that is the chorionic villi is more that is excessive exposure of the chronic uh, chorionic villi so when it can occur it can occur in molar pregnancy that is hydratiform mole hydratiform mole what happens in hydratiform mole it is a type of abnormality related to the chorionic villi where there is excessive development of the chorionic villi or the whole pregnancy it turns into moles. That is the chorion, trophoblastic. It, it turns. Then the second factor where hyperplacentosis occur, that is twin pregnancy. In twin pregnancy, more than one placenta is present. So the large area of the uterus is discovered with the placenta and diabetes. Even in RH negative pregnancy, the placenta develops bricks. Big, why? Because in diabetes, there is uh, a big placenta is developed in this. Even I told you hyperplacentosis and when there is no development of the placenta, where placental ischemia is present, in that condition is also, it may be present. Then obesity also is one of the risk factor. Right. And any pre-existing vascular disease, that is also one of the factor which may cause preeclampsia, new paternity. New paternity year, what is the meaning of new paternity year? Means what a female, she's giving birth to a baby. That is for first time, second time, she's not suffering from any hypertension. Or she's not developing any BP or pregnancy induced hypertension. But if the father of the 
baby, the next pregnancy is changed, means new paternity. In that condition, then what happens? The immune system is not matched. And as a result of which new paternity, new father, the maternal immune system and the paternal antigens, they do not match. And as a result of which the patient can be hypertensive during this present pregnancy. So new paternity is also one of the factors, thrombophilia, that is abnormal factors, that is antiphospholytery syndrome, or proteins are secreted in a large amount, or laden factor, this is an abnormal clotting factor, or it leads to formation of abnormal blood clots. So these all are all the factors which are commonly related cause hypertension during pregnancy. Now, one more factor, Logical factors of preeclampsia. Now, why preeclampsia occurs in the patient? First cause that is failure of trophoblastic invasion. So, what is this failure of trophoblastic invasion? Then, what happens during a pregnancy? First, you must know what happens during a normal normal pregnancy. You know that this trophoblast, this trophoblast, these are the chorionic villi. They are implanted on what the uterine wall they are implanted on what the decidua but some of this chorionic villi or the chorionic villi there is an endovascular invasion of the trophoblastic cell this cytotrophoblast they invade there is endovascular invasion of the cell where it invades the spiral arteries but in preeclampsia what happens it fails to occur the invasion fails to occur beyond the decidua and the myometrial junction. And as a result of which, the muscular elastic media in the myometrium, the muscular elastic media reta in myometrium, it remains responsive to the vasoconstrictors. And as a result of which, this, what happens, Decre uh, their flow is decreased. And as a result of which, there occurs atherosis of the spiral vessels, and this may lead to formation of hypertension during the pregnancy. So one factor, the exact cause, nobody knows why hypertension of pregnancy induced hypertension occurs during pregnancy. First, first cause is taken as failure of trophoblastic invasion. What is this invasion? Trophoblast, you know, cytotrophoblast, what they do? They invade the uterus, that is the decidua. And they also invade the spiral vessels, that is the vessels in the uterine wall. This file, and in this, if this fails to occur, if this invasion fails to occur in the spiral artery, then a result of which the muscular elastic media in the myometrium remains responsible to the vasoconstrictors. And as a result of which, what happens? It release as a result of which with vasoconstrictors means what happens? Vasoconstrictor, what they do? They constrict the vessels. When they constrict the vessels, they call vessel damage attackers atherosis of the vessels inside the uterus it occurs and as a result of which this may be a factor which is taken into account for the rise of blood pressure. Second is vascular endothelial damage. I told you that is one factor it is taken, failure of cytoblast, uh, cytotrophoblast invasion. Now if failure occurs, what happens? The spiral arteries, they start contracting due to the constrictors present. So basic pathology, what happens? That is endothelial dysfunction or endothelial damage. So how this endothelial damage occurs? Due to the dysfunction and vasospasm. So what will happen vasospasm occurs? It will affect all the vessels, mainly the vessels of the uterus, kidneys, brains, or the major. So I told you that PIH is a multi-system disorder. So it affects all the vessels, mainly of the uterus, kidney, brain, or other main important organs of the body, heart, whatever. So if it is all, even the lungs are affected. So this is what happens when there is endothelial damage or endothelial dysfunction occurs or spasm of these vessels occur, what happens? There's an increase in circulating of pressure substances. Just like your vascular damage hota hai, the pressure substances increase. Hote hai. What are these pressure sub the substances? They cause rising blood pressure. These pressure substances are there cause rising blood pressure. So what happens vascular, there is increased in vascular pressure substances or appearance of new pressure substances that occurs in the pregnancy. 
Then vascular system is also sensitized. When the endothelial vascular endothelial damage occurs, there occurs sensitization of the vascular system. So normal, even if there are normal circulating pressure substances, then they act adversely. They, what they do, they do not act normally. They start acting adversely. They start secreting vasoconstrictors and as a result of which more damage occurs to the vessels. Then the third thing is diminished refractoriness, means diminished sensitiveness to this pressure of senses. So what happens, sensitiveness is there, it is decreased, it means to the normal circulator and pressure substances which are present, that occurs diminished refractoriness to the substances. And as a result of which, what happens, rise in blood pressure, it occurs. Then third thing is inflammatory mediators, inflammatory mediators such as cytokines, leukins, these are all proteins which maintain the immunology. And if there occurs imbalance in this inflammatory mediator, they also cause damage to the blood vessels and as a result of which hypertension occurs. Then immunological intolerance may be there sometimes in between the maternal and fetal tissues, such one cause I told you paternity change or new paternity in her. In that condition, it can occur. Coagulation abnormalities, as a cause I told you, lead in factor five. This is a coagulation abnormality where abnormal clotting factors or abnormal blood clots are formed in the blood. Increase oxygen free radicals. If oxygen free radicals increases, there occur improper oxidations, and as a result of which, what happens? Capillary permeability increases, and as a result of which, edema or predisposition to hypertension. And certain cases, there is genetic predisposition. So these are all the etiopathological factors of preeclampsia. So you do not know exact cause, what are the causes of preeclampsia, but these factors, they are taken into account. Failure of trophoblastic invasion. So you know where trophoblastics are implanted. They implanted on the decidua, but some trophoblasts, they invade the spiral vessels also. But if there is a failure of trophoblastic invasion, what happens? The muscular elastic tissue in the they act adversely, huh? they become constriction starts. Then second, due to this vascular endothelial damage occurs, when damage occurs, what happens? Pressure substances increases. What are these pressure substances? These pressure substances are the substances which increases the blood pressure. And as a result of this, then inflammatory mediators, I told you, cytokines, leukins, all these are the proteins which maintain the immunology or cell function mainly. And if they increase, or it's a, they cause vascular damage. Then coagulation abnormalities, I told you, factor five, it is an laden factor. That is an abnormal coagulation factors are formed. And when blood clots increases, what happens in the vessels? Constriction occurs. Oxygen increase, oxygen free radicals, and genetic distress. So this is the etiopathology. Then etiopathogenesis of preeclampsia. Now, what is preeclampsia manifested by? It is mainly manifested by three symptoms, that is hypertension, edema, and proteinuria. So how hypertension occurs in, during pregnancy? So why first you know what happens during the normal pregnancy? How is the balance? It occur, how the balance occurs during pregnancy? The imbalance of components of prostaglandins that occurs during hypertension. Decrease in secretion of nitrox, uh, nitric oxide or endothelial as a result of which BP is stabilized. So when, what happens in normal pregnancy? In normal pregnancy, angiotensin 2 is destroyed by the angiotensin. Is. Who secretes the angiotensin? Is? It is secreted by the placenta. Thus the BP is stabilized during the normal pregnancy. And uh, again, the second factor, the vascular system becomes refractive. Our refractoriness of the vascular system becomes more, the vascular system becomes more refractory. Many so, imbalance between the prostaglandins, different components of prostaglandins, I told you. Then the, I told you how it attacks. Normally, what happens during the pregnancy? Now, what happens if there is an imbalance? What happens during pregnancy? Angiotensin 2 is secreted, but Placenta also secretes angiotensin is. So the activity of the angiotensin is depressed and as a result of which, what happens? It is acts as a potent, potent vasodilator. 
of BP is dilated. Also, vasus, uh, vascular system, it becomes sensitive to the pressure substances. So what happens? Sensitiveness increases to the press, the patient becomes hypotensive. So normally, so the, as a result of which there are synthesis of the nitric oxide and it also synthesis of the prostaglandins and interaction. Yeah, first factor is imbalance of the different components of prostaglandin. So what is the imbalance which occurs between this? There is imbalance between what? Prostaglandins and vasodilator prostaglandins. That is the normally I2 process vaso uh, uh, dilators are there. There is an imbalance in it. So what happens due to that? In that, due to that, increased synthesis of the thrombaxin occurs. So these are the platelets, what happens due to that platelet aggregation occurs in the vessels and increased sensitivity to the pressure substances. So the angiotensin activity, it is depressed. And then when angiotensin activity it is depressed, then what happens? BP, it rises. Angiotensin activity to depress, so the sensitivity increase, ho jati hai, to kya ho jata? BP increases. Also nitric oxide, which I told you, which acts it, it, mainly it is a vasodilator. It relaxes the vascular smooth muscles. It inhibits platelet aggregation. And when due to this Im imbalance between the components of prostaglandins and all that, a vascular damage or endovascular endothelial damage, it, what will happen? The de secretion decreases in the nitric, uh, nitric oxide cell secretion decreases. In, and as a result of which deficiency of nitric oxide, it may lead to hypertension. Then endothelial one, this is also synthesized by the endothelial cells, and it is also vasoconstrictor. So when damage occurs, endothelial one is vascular damage occurs for the blood vessels when they are damaged, this endothelial one is secreted, and it is a vasoconstrictor, which acts more than the endothelial two, and as a result of which, hypertension rises in the, and then I told you inflammatory mediators such as cytokines or interleukins, they are mainly molecular substances, which maintain the immunity, inflammation, hemoparesis, regulate the cell growth. All these factors, when they are increased, what will happen? Damage to the vascular system occurs, vascular damage occurs, and, and as a result of which the blood pressure, it increases during. And inflammatory mediators, abnormal lipid meter, inflammatory mediators are these leukins and interleukins. So as a result of which blood pressure rises. So what are the factors which are responsible for the rise of blood pressure? That is imbalance between different components of prostaglandins. What happens? Prostaglandins I2 and prostaglandin vasoconstrictor. That is imbalance. As a result of which, what happens? Thrombaxin secretion increases. So this what happens? Platelet aggregation occurs in the blood vessels. When aggregation less vessels are blocked, it increases the blood pressure. Increased sensitivity to the pressure agents, angiotensin 2. So sensitivity increases, what happens? Again, the blood pressure rises. Nitric oxide deficiency, endothelial increases, inflammatory mediators increases. And all these are factors which are responsible for the rise of blood pressure. Then second state war presented pregnancy induced hypertension presents what? Edema. Edema, what happens? How edema occurs? Increased oxidative stress. Oxidative stress means there is an imbalance between the oxidation, that is the radicals. Radicals are oxygen carrying molecules and the antioxidants. So what happens due to this damage to the end, endothelium it occurs, injury to the endothelium. So capillary, that is the when uh, vascular damage occurs, its permeability increases. When permeability increases, what happens? Capillaries, they start leaking. So what happens? Fluid mainly escapes from the capillaries inside the cellular space, etc. And as a result of which, patient becomes edematous. So hypertension, it is expressed by vascular damage, which leads to hypertension. Second factor, that is edema. And third thing, which is seen in hypertension, that is proteinuria. Now, why proteinuria occurs? I told you that is mainly vascular damage, endothelial vasus, spasm, vagara, hotai. So that is mainly main organs are affected. Here the kidneys are also affected. So spasm of the efferent glomerular uh, arterials occurs. As a result of which, anoxic changes occurs, mainly glomerular endotheliasis occurs. What happens in glomerular endotheliasis? 
that is narrowing of the capillary lumen. So that as a result of which increase capillary permeability occurs, and as a, when permeability increases, increase leakage of the proteins also occur. What happens? The proteins are leaked out. When proteins are leaked out, you can see it. These proteins they can be seen in the urine, so it is called as protein urea. So these are the main important three diagnostic points of hypertension: pregnancy induced hypertension, that is rise of blood pressure, edema, and protein urea. Then pathophysiology: when pregnancy induced hypertension occurs, or when preeclampsia occurs, what are the patho pathological changes in the different parts? Mainly, what it affects? It affects the uteroplacental blood. It affects the villi. It affects the intervillous circulation. It affects the kidneys. It affects the blood vessels. It affects the liver also. It affects. It produces a syndrome that is called as the health syndrome. Now, how does it affect? In preeclampsia, what happens? As I told you, uteroplacental blood. Invasion fails to occur. Secondary invasion fails to occur due to that failure of secondary invasion to occur. What happens in the utero placental bed? Premature aging of the placenta is seen. When why this occurs? Because vascular system, the spiral arteries which are supplying the placenta, which are supplying the blood to the placenta, they get constricted and blood flow decreases. And due to this decrease in blood flow to the placental bed, so what happens? Premature aging of the placenta can be seen. So aging of placenta, you know, normal aging. I told you two points that if if you have studied area of nuta batch or Duhas try that indicates the aging of placenta. But in this path, in the hypertension, you can see these two conditions: premature acute formation of acute red and white infarcts. Prematurely, before the term pregnancy only, you can see acute white and red infarcts on the maternal surface of the placenta. In the placental villi also, now you know what are chorionic villi. First, you must know what is the normal structure of villi. It contains synthetrophoblast. It contains cytotrophoblast. It contains uh, centrally placed capillaries, basement membrane, stroma. Yes, these are the. This is the structure. So, what changes occur in the Villi. So what happens? Synthetical degeneration starts. That is the synthetotrophoblast of the villi. They start degenerating, sprouting or in knots which appear in the synthi. Aging shows knots in the synthi uh, synthetocytotrophoblast. So there appears knots in the synthetotrophoblast. Proliferation of the cytotrophoblast also occurs. Thickening of the basement membrane occurs, and proliferative endoarthritis, that is the vessels also shows changes. Arthritis, that is inflammatory condition of the yeah, intervillous circulation, vessels which supply the fetus, that is the umbilical blood vessels, that start inflammatory changes. Then the second thing that is the changes in the kidney. Kidney functions also decreases. As I told you, proteinuria occurs. What happens? Glomerular endothelial occurs. So kidney function starts decreasing. Kidney functions, which shows proteinuria, oligouria. Kidneys don't show that much pathological changes. They usually recur immediately after the birth of the baby. But kidneys also show changes. That is mainly glomerular endothelial Vascular damage it occurs in the kidneys. The narrowing of the blood vessels in the kidney, and as a result of which capillary permeability increases in the kidney, and it also shows certain proliferative changes in the kidneys. Blood vessels, I told you, blood vessels show vascular damage. In liver also, what happens due to liver also blood supply, vascular, all the vascular system is affected. Vascular system affected means what? Vascular damage, atherosis, Atherosis so guy to blood supply come over. Blood supply decreases. What happens? Edematous changes occur. Edematous changes then. So liver also so fatty changes, subcapsular hemorrhage, peripotal hemorrhage necrosis. You can see in this condition. And due to this, what happens? Liver enzymes, edematous changes, fatty changes occurs. So liver enzymes are raised, liver function becomes less. It may be presented with symptoms such as vomiting and epigastric pain. So kidneys present with uh, oligouria, protein urea, liver presents with vomiting, epigastric pain. And this one more, that is the health syndrome. This is a syndrome means what? 
it means on this point, see this H means hemolysis, liver enzymes, and LP means low platelet count. So this is the health syndrome. So what happens in this, this commonly is related to the liver. Liver damage occurs in the syndrome. There is severe pain in the epigastric or right quadrant region. There is severe vomiting, minimatous liver, is a, liver enzymes are raised. Hemo hemolysis occurs. So this is the health center. So this is the pathophysiological change. Again, the changes may occur in the brain also. In brain, what also the same thing that the blood supply is decreased. So edematous changes in the brain, it occurs. Necrosis, hemorrhagic necrosis can occur in the brain. It is very, means persistent when BP rises or birth, persistently when blood pressure attains that level, then only brain changes or anoxia of the brain occurs. So it may be presented immediately with first important symptoms, as it brain to blood supply come over. So when blood supply less is there, what it will show first headache, then dimness, dizziness, eyes are also affected, mainly eye pathophysiological changes, blurring of vision. It is occurring due to what? Uh, uh, due to the vascular changes. What happens there? Arteries or the vessels which are supplying the brain, the eyes, all the other, um, they, what happens, nicking of vessels, obliteration of these vessels. When obliteration of the vessels occurs, blood supply decrease, blood supply decrease, decrease oxygenation. If anything gets less oxygen, what happens? Edema occurs. Then hemorrhagic changes it occurs. So all these things are seen in this. Now, when you are studying hypertension during pregnancy or preeclampsia, you differentiate the hypertension into two types, mild hypertension and severe hypertension. In mild conditions means what? When BP rises from about 140-90 mm of mercury, but it remains below less, that is 160 mm of but less than 160, 110. It means if it is 159, 109, then you call that as mild pre -lumpia. Then second type, that is severe type. Why you see the clinical types? For the management purpose, the clinical types are very important. Second type, that is the severe. See, in severe variety, what, what is the rise of? Means what happens in this? There is a persistent rise of blood pressure, which is above 160, mm of mercury no mm of mercury along with this you can see proteinuria edemia oliguria platelet clowns increases and all the health syndrome or cerebral or visual uh, disturbances means the major vital organs in the severe conditions are affected even the liver is affected even the kidneys even the lungs all these are hit. so for the clinical practice purpose you divide hypertension or pregnancy induced hypertension that is preeclampsia into two types that is a mild variety of preeclampsia severe variety of preeclampsia so mild is less than 160 110 and severe is more than 160 mm and what higher now how will you diagnose the hypertension during pregnancy so diagnosis is done usually on the basis of signs and symptoms. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of hypertension during pregnancy? Now, usually hypertension, how does it occur? So how will you know that the patient is hypertension? Or how does the condition start? Usually, the one set is insidious and fast. Uske baat, thoda sa slow run kar sakte. One more thing you have to keep in mind in pregnancy induced hypertension or preeclampsia, it is unavoidable. Means what? Once the patient starts developing hypertension, you cannot avoid the development of hypertension. But what you can do, what you can do, you can settle that much. So once set, it is usually insidious, it runs a slow course and sometimes it may be an acute condition or rapid symptoms also can develop. Now, what are the mild symptoms? So you know what it is presented by three symptoms, that is edema, proteinuria, and hypertension. So rise in blood pressure, that is main important symptom of the hypertension. Then second is edema, that is swelling. Edema, it occurs mainly starting, it starts on the lower limbs. 
so it can be seen swelling over the ankles it can be seen during in the morning or you can see the tightening of the ring finger so in initial condition lower limbs for the limbs the edema is more when later on the whole body also it can show edema the changes then the other important symptoms alarming symptoms of hypertension means when the bp is persistently rising and when persistently blood supply occurs less to the different organs then it starts showing symptoms related to that different organ or when vascular damage occurs to the mainly the important organs then the symptoms related to that organ starts such as if brain blood supply or vascular damage occurs there and blood supply to the brain which is this uh, disturbed then the patient experiences headache disturbs sleep kidney starts affected it shows diminished urinary output liver changes starts then if it shows epigastric pain then if it starts affecting the eye vessels then eye symptoms that is dimness of vision blurring vision in that it can be seen then the sign important first important sign which is seen in a female with hypertension is abnormal weight gain a weight gain of 3 kg or more during in one month of pregnancy that is a strong indicated sign of rise of blood pressure so abnormal weight gain that is weight gain of about 3 kg in a month and sudden rise of this or sudden increase in this weight it gives an important diagnostic point or it is a important sign of preeclampsia then some in certain cases pulmonary edema can occur due to leaky capillaries aortic pressures that is the osmotic pressure it decreases abdominal examinations so these are the diagnostic point on other cases other diagnostic point whenever you are diagnosing any case in obstetric you have to tell symptoms you have to tell signs and even you have to reveal the abdominal examinations what happens the main pathology is that is placental abnormality decrease of blood supply from the uterus to the placenta occurs so as a result of which what happens chronic placental insufficiency develop so supply from placenta uterus to placenta decreases from placenta to the blood of fetus also the blood supply decreases and as a result of which it affects is the fetus also that is amniotic fluid level it becomes less fetus shows growth retardation what fetus shows intrauterine growth restriction that is due to the lack of nutrients or due to the lack of oxygen the fetus starts showing growth restriction then severe preeclampsia in severe preeclampsia again the signs and symptoms that is in severe preeclampsia mainly the signs and symptoms are the same but only the symptoms which may be related to the development of different pathological changes in the different organs usually develop so in severe preeclampsia also edema is present but the type of edema is pitting type of edema it is present what type of edema it is present a pitting type of edema is present even on the face the edema may be present lower limbs ankles when you give pressure on that part the it will pit on pressure so pitting type of edema is present in present in severe preeclampsia then in severe preeclampsia headache appears confusion occurs uh confusion occurs even the, the patient will get loss of memory also sometimes occur eye symptoms appear that is blurring of vision dimness nystagmus uh, all the symptoms eye symptoms they appear in this condition if right severe vomiting may present in the mild pre uh, severe preeclampsia pain in the right uh, quadrant region or epigastric pain may be present in severe preeclampsia urine volume will decrease in severe preeclampsia so these are all the severity of symptoms rises in the severe preeclampsia now we we'll see with complications in preeclampsia now what are the complications 
of eclampsia during pregnancy now during pregnancy the complications which may occur in the free eclampsia due to the decrease supply of nutrients to the fetus or decrease in between the placental blood flow and the fetal blood flow it usually leads to accidental hemorrhage what is accidental hemorrhage it is also called as abruptio placenta what happens severe edematous changes occur in the placenta and constriction in the blood vessels so the area of attachment changes during the pregnancy due to the due to this changes and as a result of which what happened suppression of placenta can occur and this is one complication which is commonly occur with severe severe hypertension during pregnancy or severe preeclampsia that is called as accidental hemorrhage that is called as accidental hemorrhage why that is also called as abruptio placenta then the second important complication occurs due to this decrease supply that is intrauterine growth restriction this is due to placental insufficiency then it may lead to fetal asphyxia and premature baby or preterm labor starts so preterm baby will be born and due to this preterm labor of preterm baby what happens prematurity is important complication if baby is born premature then many complications occur during the pregnancy then during the labor again many complications are presented due to preeclampsia that is due sometimes the female she can go into eclampsia that is eclampsia is what complicated with epileptic form of fits and kya ho jata hai bahut zyada bp bad jata hai to kya ho jata hai brain it does not get the supply of oxygen so brain shows changes and as a result of which what hyper fits occur in the patient so that is the next which complication this commonly it is not that like that it occurs during the labor only but if patient with preeclampsia goes into eclampsia labor sets in so during the labor the complication is eclampsia postpartum hemorrhage may occur puperium puperial complication usually eclampsia may start patient can go into shock due to the sudden changes in the concentration of sodium chloride because what happens in pregnancy there is edema there is increase in sodium potassium levels then it sepsis may occur during the puperium period due to what happens in this when patient is hypertensive what you do induction of labor you you terminate the pregnancy by certain methods and as a result of which there may be increase incidence of sepsis due to uh, less vitality or lower vitality fetal risk also rises during the pregnancy remote complications also develop that is residual hypertension means once she develops hypertension during pregnancy or pregnancy uh, preeclampsia she can uh, suffer from essential hypertension during the whole life that even second that is recurrent preeclampsia can develop that is in the next pregnancy also she can suffer from preeclampsia and third is she may develop if kidneys are affected to a level more that she can develop chronic renal disease now whenever you are managing a case of preeclampsia how should you manage a case of preeclampsia first is you have to prevent from developing of the severe preeclampsia so what is the first thing you have to what i told you preeclampsia is a condition which is unavoidable if the patient is prone to develop preeclampsia you cannot avoid her from development of eclampsia preeclampsia but you can help the patient to the mild symptoms only so first line of management is prevention so how will you prevent the patient from developing pregnancy induced hypertension that is preeclampsia first booking the female earlier commonly if she is a high risk group family history of hypertension previous hypertension pregnancy or any other complicated pregnancy is there she should book herself early in the antenatal care health care center or a hospital level that is secondary level health center or tertiary health care center that wherever she takes antenatal care then the they should the whoever 
giving her treatment should they should diagnose whether the patient is she is in a high risk group or a low risk group so the patients with high risk group that is having prior previous hypertension or family history of hypertension or multiple pregnancies so any other pregnancy previous molar pregnancy they are taken into high risk group then what should be done to this type of patients they should give proper antenatal care what is this proper antenatal care proper advices and proper management is required now what should you first is prevention prevention is by giving proper advice to the patient now what should be the patient advice who has the risk of developing pre preeclampsia she should tell she should be asked to take complete rest at least 2 hours in the afternoon and 8 hours in the night sleep is important for this patient she should be asked to take a low salt diet she should ask to take a low salt diet or excessive salt in her diet should be avoided in this patient then the third thing which should be advised to the patient that is regular check up of the blood pressure has to be done whatever she is uh, she is developing if she is a prone to female that she should check her blood pressure regularly even with this all this and she should take less water prevention of excessive water during pregnancy uh, that is she should not take excess water during pregnancy those females who are mainly prone to preeclampsia so excess drinking of excessive water should be avoided so these are the certain advices given to the female for the patients who are taken into high risk group who have the chances of developing it now these patients they may remain normal or they may develop mild preeclampsia when the patient develops mild preeclampsia what is the line of management now if the patient develops the mild preeclampsia then complete bed rest should be asked to the patient so since this is the schematic management of preeclampsia according to the don's textbook then if she develops mild preeclampsia she must request complete bed rest complete suspension of the daily activities hospital rest or home rest whatever the conditions are favorable that should be advised to the patient regular bp checking out during the four pair investigations should be carried out that is complete blood count platelet count coagulation profile should be taken uric acid creatinine so blood investigations related to the blood investigation to the related to the urine all this investigations should be done investigations of thalmoscopy should be done so all this investigations should be carried out a majority of the females who develop mild preeclampsia they settle to normal or they remain mild only with the above treatment that is what is that above treatment complete bed rest suspension of daily activities avoidance of excess salt diet avoidance of excess water all this is done and pregnancy should be complete bed rest if environment persists then home rest or hospital rest and daily monitoring of the fetus and daily monitoring of the mother has to be done mother maternal monitoring on the maternal monitoring is done on what points on blood pressure and the maternal monitoring is done on urine output and blood pressure and fetal monitoring on fetal heart sounds daily fetal movement count and a she is female is asked to see whether how much the movement she is fetus is taking in between the 12 hours or whatever time she is taking a rest when she is not sleeping she is asked to count the kicking movements then amniotic fluid volume so monitoring of the fetus is all done in all this part and pregnancy is continued up till 37 weeks of pregnancy and after the 37 weeks of pregnancy no need for the cause of hypertension is pregnancy so no need of normal labor to uh, be started what you do you terminate that pregnancy termination of pregnancy that is by induction of labor using cervix if it is not dilated or uh, it is a little hard to dilate then you can use prostaglandin gel artificial rupture of membrane oxytocin drip and terminate that pregnancy and if failure of normal pregnancy is then that cesarean section is the choice of labor what is the choice of labor cesarean section is the choice of labor then if it is a severe then in severe condition what requires hospital admission if she develops severe preeclampsia bp rises above the basal levels 
patient goes for BP rises 160, about 180, 200. Like that, the BP is the restlessness, tachycardia, that increases visual disturbances. The patient is admitted in the hospital. After admission into the hospital, the patient, IV fields are given to the patient. Complete uh, bed rest is advised. Initially, when BP is high, only oral fluids are given to the patient. When the patient recovers, then the pregnancy diet can be started. Along with this, antihypertensive drugs, dizepam, all these tablets and no injections can be given so that the patient, it, she recovers from the high blood. Even antihypertensive drugs are advised to the patient. So persistent, if there is increase or severe hypertension is there, then patient is admitted at the tertiary healthcare center. Daily fetal well-being assessment, maternal well-being assessment, it is done. Antihypertensive, anticonvulsants, diazepam therapy is given to the patient. Patient usually settles to normal. If patient settles to normal, the pregnancy can be continued up till 37 weeks. And after the 37 weeks, the, you can terminate the pregnancy. But even after about treatment given to the patient, sometimes the patient does not show any response to your treatment. That time you have to terminate that pregnancy. Method of termination, again, normal or cesarean section is the choice of labor in this condition. So this is the choice of labor in this condition. Now, homeopathic management of so how can you manage this hypertensive disorders during pregnancy? You, can con you cannot completely treat the patient, but you can avoid the patient from mild hypertension to go into the severe hypertension. So what is the line of management of hypertension during pregnancy? So you can minimize the risk to the mother. What is that? And the fetus also by using homeopathic measure. Along with this, you have to monitor the patient. Along with this, you have to monitor the, of the patient by doing ultrasonography, diazepam, then hospital admissions. But few homeopathic medicines can be used in these conditions. That is, you can use gelsemium, you can use varitum wider, you can use cal caliphos, helonius, mercurius, cupram arsenus, and apis mellifica. This has an important role to play that is the kidney infections or whatever the infections are there that are, can be managed with the homeopathic medicines. Usually homeopathic man management, it depends upon symptom similarity. It depends upon symptom similarity, but also on individualization of the patient. So if a remedy is completely, uh, completely fit to the patient to be given according to the basis of individualization, then you can give also homeopathic medicines such as gelsemium. Symptoms of gelsemium, usually that is albuminous urine. The urine is in abundant and a large amount it is there. Patient is having headache. Color of the urine is very high. So these are the symptoms of gelsemium. Caliphos, when there is a indicated in, mainly caliphos is indicated in the last three months of the pregnancy. When there is a severe neurasthenia, is what happens? The, uh, sensations are lost in this condition when then then caliphos is indicated even albuminuria is present helonis is also indicated helonis is even indicated in abortion condition but helonis is also indicated in pregnancy induced hypertension mainly in when the urine is albumin, uh, albuminous uh, mainly with great weakness is there or drowsiness feeling is there and a uh, it is, acts like a diuretic also, helonis. So what has happened? As it acts like a diuretic, it reduces the edema. And then mercury also can be indicated, mainly when there is an amount of urine is scanty. Uh, frequently, the patient has the sensation to go for urine. Usually, yellow color of the urine, it is there. Albuminuria is present in the urine. Even cupronas uh, can also can be indicated during pregnancy. Commonly patients with chronic nephritis or pregnancy patients with chronic nephritis with garlic color order of the urine that can be, then it can be indicated. Even apis mellifica can be indicated in the condition, mainly apis mellifica. It is edema is present, especially over the lower eyelids. It is present. General dropsical condition is present. Pressure is very, uh, patient, patient is very sensitive to pressure. 
urine is usually high color then sticking or the pains are present pains are usually stinging types and all that or bad odor of the urine is present albuminuria is present in the urine so this is the home certain homeopathic drugs which you can indicate in preeclampsia okay thank you everyone